Ellen Barrio. I am the Advancement Manager of the American Youth Foundation. So I actually did start um, in Advancement with the AYF um, in 2005. I was sort of freshly new out of college. Um, and I knew I wanted to work in nonprofit. I had worked at a um, animal rescue nonprofit for about a year in development, um, more in like an intern role. And I was looking for something full time. Um, and I actually found uh, the listing on the Grow Group, a nonprofit website here. Um, and I did uh, some research on the organization that was just really drawn to the mission of the AYF, best self and balance living and giving back to the community. Um, so I applied for the job and I got it in 2005. Um, and then this is, it's my ninth full-time year in a, with the AYF. And um, I have yet to find any other organization uh, with such a meaningful and impactful mission. Uh, so the Advancement Department really builds awareness and support for the AYF across all constituencies. Um, it really gives people the opportunity to engage uh, and foster a long-term connection with the AYF um, and give them opportunities to stay connected in an impactful way throughout their lives. So we do things like fundraising and alumni relations and programs for alumni and adults at the sites. Um, things like that that sort of help people who have graduated beyond being young participants to sort of stay included and uh, involved throughout their lives. Working day to day, I manage the financial pieces of the advancement department. So things like working on the donor database and managing the expenses and the national leadership award. Um, I also manage the logistics of the annual golf tournament, which is AYF's largest fundraiser. Um, it was established in 2012 to um, honor our longtime board chairman of 27 years, Donald Manfred. In 2006, which was my second year working um, in the advancement office at AYF in St. Louis, um, Elizabeth Mulcahy, who was the NLC director at the time, um, came to me and said, hey, would you want to be involved in NLC and sort of come up to Minnewanka? Uh, during the summer and work with programs to sort of learn more about what the programs do because you know you hear about what the programs do in St. Louis but once you go up to the sites and really see everything in action it, it takes on a whole new meaning so um, I said of course and I um, went up there in 2006 for the first summer and worked um, as a first year uh, coordinator at NLC and sort of learned about the program and then worked for seven more or six more years after that for seven years total um, in the NLC community it was just it was really really cool it was really fun to see program in action and to sort of see a piece of the AYF that was just so different from the day-to-day -day, um, work of the advancement team. And I really think it helped me work um, in advance by being able to tell the story of the program. While I was working on um, NLC staff in 2009, um, Elizabeth asked me if I would serve as a mentor for the class of 2012, um, which was just, I mean, it's, it's just amazing to be asked. And I was so happy to um, take on that challenge. Um, so when you're asked to be a mentor, essentially you and three other people, so um, Angela, Matt, and Simon, if you're watching, were my fellow mentors, um, you sort of stay with one class for all four years and sort of like drive them through conference. So um, I really got to see these, these kids come in at 14 or 15 and then, you know, grow all four years throughout the whole program and sort of become this incredible leadership community. Um, it was really, it was just awesome. So I would say that was my favorite moment um, all four years of that. But I would say my one favorite moment um, at conference, uh, each class has their own name and their own motto and sort of their own class colors and their own identities. Um, and you get a class scarf. Everybody in the class receives a scarf um, and then sort of wear it around during graduation and different councils and it's sort of you know, bonds you with the rest of your class. There are people that have scarves from, you know, the 60s that come back to conference and back to events and wear them. And it's just, it's such a moment when you see someone else wearing the class scarf. Um, so I would say receiving the class scarf, um, particularly because I wasn't um, a participant, so I didn't, I didn't receive one until I was a mentor, but I would say receiving the class scarf was a really special moment for me. I actually have it right here for my class. Uh, the class name means um, ready for the challenge. Um, and I love, I, you know, like you said, everybody's kind of scattered all throughout the country in my class, but um, we keep up with social media, like thank goodness for Facebook. Um, I get to see all of the amazing things they're doing. I mean, most of them are in their late 20s now, which just makes me feel old. Um, but it's really just incredible to see these people who I saw, you know, come day one to conference at age 15 doing these amazing things out in the world. 
Something that's really special about the AYF is that the participants, um, you know, they go to these beautiful sites. Minamonka and Mira Vista are just incredible. You see them for the first time and totally understand why there are so many people that love them so much. But I think the really special thing about the AYF is people go to those sites and they take part in the programs, but then when they leave those sites, sort of the values and all of the teachings of the AYF and the things that they learn are with them in their own communities. And so they sort of spread that best self and balanced living and you know giving back to their communities into their own home communities. So it's sort of like they never really leave uh, the AYF. It sort of stays with them and continues um, to help them you know do better things in the world as they as they leave the program site. It's, it's amazing to think that the AYF has been around for nearly 100 years. I mean, that's a great accomplishment in and of itself to keep an organization, a nonprofit, together for 100 years. Um, and I think the mission of best self and you know balanced living and giving back to the community is is pretty timeless. I think that there's a reason that AYF has been able to sustain that mission for 100 years, and that's because it is it is really a timeless mission. I think um, that I would hope that AYF would, would continue those um, teachings in the next 50 years, but I think my real hope would be uh, to be able to bring together an even more inclusive and diverse. Um, set of participants so that we could widen our audience even further and have you know even more inclusive and even more diverse participants attend our programs um, I think would be a really really cool thing to see happen in the coming years. So I would say that my favorite part about working with the AYF is just working with such a committed group of individuals. Um, it seems that everybody that is involved with the AYF is in all the way. There's nobody that is just giving half their time or half their energy. It seems like Every single person, whether it's a staff member or a board member or a participant or a summer seasonal staff person, everyone is really just 100% there to further the mission of the AOF. And it's really hard to find that um, where it just seems like the whole collective group is really all in for the mission. So I think that's my favorite part. It's, it's very inspiring. <laughs>